So there's obviously huge regulation changes for next year, um, both in terms of what happens with the tyres, but also what happens in terms of the aerodynamics, and both of those are coupled. So the first thing is the tyres are going to get larger in size. Um, but as you can see here, also the width is increasing. So we've gained 100 millimetres of track per side. So we've gone from 1800 millimetres to 2000. This has a big effect aerodynamically because the size of the front tyre impacts the rest of the car behind it. The wake of this tyre is really important. One of the most important things in the aerodynamics of a Formula One car. And that influences the rest of the design of the car in terms of things like the front wing. So the front wing is also going to get wider, but it's only get wider by about 75 millimetres. Um, it's also going to end up with a, a sort of swept forward shape like this. Um, and that's been done aesthetically to make the car look quicker uh, visually. But this link between the front wing and the tyres is very important aerodynamically, and that's one of the things we've got to get right. To go with the tyre width, we're also increasing the width of the bodywork. So that's going by the same 100 millimetres per side as the tyres or track of the car is going. So that increases the size of the floor and therefore means we'll gain more downforce. The same is true of the rear wing, so the rear wing will also become wider, but it's also been moved backwards and down, so it's been moved 150 millimetres backwards and 150 millimetres down, which means it's closer to the diffuser and affects the diffuser performance more. The diffuser itself will grow in size, so currently it's 125 millimetres high and that will become 175 millimetres high. And the leading edge, the start of the diffuser where it kicks up, also moves forward. So all of those things are going to add downforce to the car and an efficient downforce and performance. At the front of the side pod, this area is currently heavily controlled, so there's a, there's a regulation box that looks like this that we can't go into in 2016. Under the 2017 rules, this is all freed up, which means that the solutions we can put there, or the room we've got to use, means that there'll be aerodynamic performance found as a result. There's also other detail changes, so the front suspension, which is controlled heavily in incidents at the moment, so plus and minus five degrees, the range of angle goes up, but the way that angle is defined is also changed, which offers us some freedom for performance. One of the other changes is the plank. So the plank of the car, which sits underneath the reference plane or underneath the floor, limits us in terms of how low we can go, because obviously we don't want to go so low that we lose all of the downforce through the plank and we don't have it through the tyres. So for next year, the leading edge of the plank moves backwards by 100 millimetres, which doesn't sound an awful lot, but because of the rake angle of the car, because the rear is higher than the front, that will allow us to lower the car more and therefore get aerodynamic performance as a result. So we expect huge changes for next year.